Hello everyone, this is Afterburner's Flight Sim channel, and even though my channel is primarily focused on flight simulation, but I have decided to address other topics if I see the need, and today I wanted to address one problem with this camera, Panasonic HCV770. This is quite a popular camera among vloggers and among amateur filmers. And I've been having this camera for one and a half years. And I can attest that this is a very good camera for its price. It's full HD, so it's not 4K. But on the other hand, you can get 60 frames per second. Almost all 4K cameras these days that are below $1,000 or even slightly above, they can only record in 25p if you are in Europe or 30p if you are in the United States or Japan, so in NTSC regions. And this is too low of a frame per second for 4K. I mean, 4K you have a much bigger picture size and you actually need more frames per second to preserve a smooth sensation of emotion. So to me, Full HD is more than enough, especially given, given the viewing distances in most households where Full HD is already too much. Anyway, so Full HD is still a good option, especially since you can, in Europe, it's 50 frames per second or in NTC region 60, but with this camera, you can set it in the service menu to any frame rate. And even though I've purchased this camera in Europe, I set it to 60 frames per second because that's compatible with most monitors and you also get obviously a smoother a smoother motion. I mean, after all, you gain 20% in terms of frames per second. Now, <clears throat> I didn't want to review this camera, for there are plenty of reviews available on YouTube. I wanted to address one issue of the stabilizer that I've encountered over the 18 months that I've been using this camera. And the, stabili the stabilizer which is called OIS uh, Hybrid, OIS Optical Image Stabilizer. The stabilizer does a very good job if you shake the camera, but if you make smooth pannings or if you hold the camera quiet and you move it only slightly, in some situations you may experience a phenomenon where the edges of the image become blurry for for a short time and also if you zoom out and you move the camera a little and you zoom in you will see a sudden sudden judder or how could you call it you know a sudden <clears throat> sudden movement of the picture and i'm gonna document that right now i'm using my smartphone, which is a cheap smartphone, so if the quality is not good here, don't judge. Again, it's because of the smartphone. Soon I will connect the camera to the TV and demonstrate what I'm talking about. And I will also show you what you can do to mitigate that problem. All right, this footage comes directly from the camera. You may have noticed that my voice sounds differently because this is the microphone of the camera. And here I have connected the camera to the TV. And the, stabili the stabilizer is off at this point. I first wanted to demonstrate the stabilizer. And as I said, it does. A good job especially if you zoom in so pay attention to the clock in the middle and if I zoom in you see it shakes now my hands may be a little shaky but even if your hands are calm you will see you will still see some shaking on the screen the more shaking the more you zoom in so now I'm gonna turn on the stabilizer let me zoom in even more. This is eight times zoom. 
and I'm turning on the stabilizer and you see it is much much more stable so in this regard the optical image stabilizer really does a wonderful job especially if you zoom in however there is a problem which I have already addressed and now pay attention to the picture so I'm gonna zoom out I'm gonna zoom out all the way down to one time and now I will slowly pan the camera to the left and pay attention to the bottom left you see uh, pay attention to them to the number one nine today is January 19th 2021 and you will see that the picture on the left side and on the right side of the screen becomes blurry now right now it is not as obvious let me repeat it so I'm directing the camera to the clock zoom in zoom out and now I will pan to the left and pay attention to the number one nine you see it is now very blurry and one way to get rid of the blurriness is to zoom back in but if I do it you see that the camera moves the position abruptly to the right so if I zoom out you see the image is sharp again I think I should repeat it to show it to you one more time okay you see again the number 19 is blurry and on the right side of the screen the joystick is also blurry if I zoom in you see there is a sudden jump in the picture and after the picture jumps the sharpness is restored but this jump is certainly not good if you pan your camera while shooting some landscape videos and let me show you another example of how the picture or how the picture becomes blurry that is if you hold the camera quiet and you slightly move it to the left and to the right you see focus on the top right part of the picture and you will see that the clock and also the texture on the wall it becomes blurry if you pan the camera further to the left and it becomes sharper if you move it back in the opposite direction and I have checked a lot of review videos about this camera but nowhere could I find anyone documenting this problem and I have noticed this problem from times to times because I personally like to make smooth pannings obviously if you shake your camera aggressively or if you're walking this may not be a problem because the stabilizer is intended to stabilize or to rectify aggressive shakings or any aggressive movements but if you move the camera smoothly the stabilizer may not know if it's intentional or not so if you move the camera slowly the stabilizer is thinking that you are shaking the camera so it tries uh, with all the force to counteract but if the stabilizer counteracts it may reach a point or you know the optical stabilizer it uses a system of lenses that's why it's called optical stabilizer and at some point if you pan the camera to the left and you leave it there the stabilizer lens system may actually be deflected all the way to the right or to the left and that's where the characteristics of the lenses change and hence the blurriness on the edges 
on the middle of the picture. It is not as pronounced as you've seen, but it is definitely on the edges. So I'm gonna do it again quickly. You see the number 19 is blurry. I'm gonna zoom back in. Now it's okay. Zooming back out is also okay. And how do I know that this is due to the stabilizer? If you turn it off, okay, so you see OIS off, and I repeat the experiment. Okay, so now we have heavy shaking, or micro shaking, I would say. Zooming back out, and panning to the left, and you see the number 19 is sharp. So you will not experience this problem if you, for example, use a tripod and you turn the stabilizer off. So at least that's some good news. It's not because there is some inherent fault with the camera lenses, rather it's because of the stabilizer. And personally, this problem has annoyed me a little bit because even though you can turn off the stabilizer, but it's not an option if you film by hand. And let me show you one trick, you could call it, or one method to reduce this problem. I'm not saying to eliminate this problem completely, but at least to reduce this problem. And now I'm using the smartphone because if I access the menu, it is not visible on the screen while I record the video. So therefore, I need to do it here. So let's see, is it sharp enough? Okay, now it is. So I'm accessing the menu. And clicking on record setup. And there is a mysterious option here. And I have not even paid attention to that option because it's called White Conversion, Conversion Lens Set. So let's click on Info to find out what it's about. It says Optimize OIS for White Conversion Lens. So o OIS, remember, is the optical image stabilizer. So optimize it for White Conversion Lens. And I don't use a white conversion lens, therefore I didn't pay any attention whatsoever. But recently I thought, let's just turn it on and see what it does to the stabilizer. So let me turn on the option here and see how that affects the function of the stabilizer. After having activated the white conversion lens, let me now turn on the stabilizer because it was turned off. Okay, OIS is on and let's repeat the experiment and see if there are any changes. I do feel like the stabilizer works less intensively or aggressively but that's just my gut feeling okay so the number 19 to me it doesn't look as blurry and not only that but you also see a quicker correction to the default position of the stabilizer. Let me repeat it. Okay, so you may argue... Well, I, I would still say that it's less blurry than before. And you can also see that the stabilizer corrects itself automatically so now it's sharp and let's see if we have the same jump in scene ok 
Okay, so this is zoomed out and now I zoom in and yes, the jump is not as big. Yeah, so it's definitely less pronounced to me. So if the described problem annoys you as much as it does me, you can turn on this option. Now, there are some caveats with this option, unfortunately, because um, I don't understand why Panasonic just didn't, uh, why Panasonic changed it. So first thing is that your zoom, your optical zoom, if you don't use this option, your optical zoom is 20 times, but with this option activated, it is reduced to a maximum of 10 times. So you see, if you zoom in, 10 times is the maximum zoom factor that can be achieved with the wide conversion lens on. And okay, I mean, the difference between 10, 10 times and 20 times, it's not as big, even though the number is twice as much. But the more you zoom in, the faster the multi multiplier starts to grow. So you may argue that this is not so big of a caveat. And the other caveat is that you cannot use the lamp in the camera. Because if you attach a wide lens, wide angle lens, certainly if you turn on the internal light, it will mess up with the lens. So I guess that's the reason why they, uh, why they don't allow you to turn on the lamp if you have this option turned on. And as far as the reduced zoom factor, it is widely known that having a wide lens attached, zooming in may lead to a deterioration of the image quality. So maybe Panasonic wanted to prevent, for, uh, to prevent the user from having a deterioration by zooming in. But I wish they would allow us to retain the maximum zoom factor even with the wide lens attached in order to take advantage of the behavior of the stabilizer. So I would say if you, if you don't care about the reduction in the zoom factor and the maximum zoom factor, and if you make smooth pannings while using your stabilizer, I would recommend that you turn on the wide lens conversion option because at least it doesn't lead to the same blurriness as with that option deactivated. Uh, I'm gonna contact Panasonic and see what they have to say about it. I mean, you have to for forgive a little bit because this is a $300 camera or $350 camera and you cannot expect having a lens system or a stabilizer system that can rival any professional cameras worth $10,000 or even $5,000. So even though this problem was annoying to me, but I figured out that some other cameras have some blurry edges in the default state or some other issues when zoomed in. So therefore, uh, you have to set your expectations realistically. And again, if you... And the thing is that the blurriness is not visible on the camera display. That's the thing. The camera display has a low resolution to begin with. It's not a full HD resolution. I don't even remember what the resolution is, but it's so low that you do not see the blurriness on the camera display. And that's why I think most people didn't even notice this problem. Let me know what you think about this issue. Have you also seen it? Or have you also wondered why the image is blurry on the edges from times to times? So you may have gotten the answer. 
and using the tripod is obviously the best thing because then you have stable image and you don't have any of these issues if you deactivate the stabilizer but if you I mean if you are in a situation where you need to shake you are shaking your camera intensively while walking or driving in a car as a passenger then the normal stabilizer and the normal option it does its job well and the blurriness again it's only temporary so it's not a permanent state all right again so let me know in the comment section if you have also experienced this issue and how you have coped with it thank you for watching and take care